Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome. We are right in the middle of a bunch of oil burning experiments on this Toyota Corolla with the 1ZZ FE engine in it, which happens to be notorious for burning oil under certain circumstances, which might be lack of maintenance, but the culprits seem to be the low tension piston rings and the oil drain back holes, which are either too small or too few in the pistons. If you watched the previous video, you'll know at the end I said we were going to install an oil catch can. If you don't know what an oil catch can is, it is basically a reservoir between the PCV valve and the intake manifold that catches any oil that comes out of the PCV system. Now, this video might be a little scattered because I recorded it at different times and I was having issues making my iPhone videos work with my Adobe and my Microsoft stuff, and I kind of lost track of exactly what I was doing and what the point was. So please bear with me. First, let's talk about the PCV valve. And now I'm going to roll in some footage of me sitting at this table, recording a video that I did weeks ago. And I don't remember exactly what was on it, but hopefully it's informative. One thing I learned is my understanding of the PCV valve was almost completely wrong. I thought the PCV valve was operated by pressure building up in the crankcase and coming up into the valve cover where it causes the PCV valve to open and allow that pressurized gas to get back down into the intake just after the throttle body. That is not true at all. The PCV valve, as a lot of you know, is operated by vacuum. So then, of course, my first thought is, oh, it's operated by vacuum. So the more vacuum that is being pulled through the PCV valve, the more open it is and the more gases are allowed to travel through. I thought it would be producing more vacuum at higher RPMs, right? You know, sucking more air and it would cause the PCV valve to be wide open and allow a lot more gas from the crankcase to go into the intake and be burned up or whatever happens in there. But that's not true either. A lot of you already know this. Here's how it helped me. Let's say your air filter is over here. Air is entering over here, trying to get into your engine on this side. This is the throttle plate. When the throttle plate opens, more air is allowed to enter and your engine runs faster. When it closes, less air is allowed to enter. But the PCV valve hose is on this side of the intake. So when the throttle plate closes, vacuum is higher on the PCV system. So why does the PCV valve have higher vacuum when the throttle plate is closed? Well, imagine your engine is like a big vacuum. We'll just say this is the engine. It is a big vacuum. It is trying to suck air just super hard this way and out your exhaust pipe. Right, so don't worry about pistons and all that sort of thing. Air is wanting to flow like crazy through here. Here's your PCV inlet. Here, let's just say this is your throttle body. This really should be open. So air is trying to be sucked this way through here constantly. As long as that engine is running, it is pulling, pulling, pulling air. When the throttle plate is open, let me use a pencil for this. When the throttle plate is open, you know, it swivels. So open is this way, air flows around there really quickly. And there isn't a whole lot of pressure coming through here. It's just tiny, just being trickled in. But, and this is a terrible eraser. If you suddenly close the throttle plate, so the throttle plate just slams closed, now it can no longer get this air in here, so it's going to try really, really hard to get air in through the PCV valve. That is why when the engine is idling, the vacuum on the PCV valve is the greatest. It's because it's located on this side of the throttle body. It can no longer get air through here, so it's gonna to have to try to draw it in through there. So it increases vacuum when the throttle plate is closed. But when the vacuum is higher on the PCV system, it actually closes the PCV valve. So how exactly does it work? Here we have basically three modes that your PCV valve is in. On this side is your intake manifold. 
on this side is your valve cover. So all the gases are going to be moving in this direction. So it is the vacuum on the intake side that is making this device operate like it's supposed to, not the pressure on this side. Of course, if you did increase the pressure on this side, it would still operate it, but forget that. So basically inside of the PCV body is this little valve, or we'll just call it a stopper. And there's a spring, I'm gonna kinda of draw it. There's a spring around here that basically keeps this in a neutral position. So what happens is when you're at idle, there's a strong vacuum on this side. It pulls so much vacuum, it overcomes the tension in the spring. Spring compresses and it stops up the end of the PCV valve, the outlet. In normal operation, when there's low vacuum on this side, this would be high vacuum. When there's low vacuum, under increased speed, when the throttle plate is opening and it's allowed to get more air in from the throttle plate side, it drops vacuum on the PCV side and this relaxes and allows gases to flow through it. So at idle, gases are not flowing through it. Under normal driving conditions, gases are flowing through it. This right here is a backfire condition. So I really have these arrows facing the wrong direction. So if there is a backfire, Let's just say that's a backfire. It blows this stopper closed on this side. So the PCV valve can actually either close this way or close this way. And when it's in the middle is when the gases are flowing. Now here's something I could find absolutely nothing about on the internet. What happens when the pressure on this side is high? So say for some reason you do have a buildup of pressure in the crankcase and this pressure becomes very, very big. You would think at least I would think that that would force this closed. It would blow that closed, right? And if there are any engineers out there who can explain this better or know how this works, please correct me in the comments. But like I said, I could find absolutely nothing on this. I Googled, will the PCV valve work from pressure and not from vacuum? I Googled in all sorts of ways and could find absolutely nothing on it. I looked through all the images, through videos, through documentation, all these schematics of PCV valves and nothing talked about when there was high pressure on this side. So I'm sort of theorizing here. I know this is stuff that's been gone over before and someone knows how this works, but I just can't find any documentation on it. We're gonna blow into the PCV valve in just a few minutes and you'll see what I'm talking about. But if air is forced into this side of the PCV valve, it is still allowed to escape over here. It does not plug itself up. So when you blow into the PCV valve or when there's high pressure on this side, air is still allowed to travel through here and out into the intake side. Why is that? Well, it's apparently due to the shape of the plunger. As the air is trying to go around the tip of this plunger, so the air trying to get around the tip of that plunger is keeping this plunger pulled back. It's not like the air is pushing against the bottom and trying to jam it closed. The air is going this way. And as it's going around the front, the air pressure inside here is keeping that open. So this is really operating on more of a pressure or vacuum differential and not just vacuum. So if you think about it like this, blowing in here is just meaning that this has even lower pressure. You know, it has a negative pressure compared to what is on this side. So if you blow in this, it is extremely low vacuum on this side, relatively. That's basically it. Hope I didn't confuse anybody anymore. And hopefully I explained this correctly. So here's the PCV valve. Happens when I blow on it. Okay, I can't blow. When I blow it, it's totally closed. When I suck, it stays closed until I start to release the sucking pressure. What happens when I blow in this end? I can blow through it. So if the pressure gets too high underneath the valve cover, it would allow gases to vent through there. 
I'm gonna have to crank the engine to do this testing, so it might be very difficult to hear what I'm saying. So hopefully, hopefully it'll come together all right. Here is the PCV hose. I'm gonna hook up the PCV valve. So we're gonna see what the vacuum from the intake does to the PCV valve. Now I'm gonna crank the engine. So there's no air going to it right now, but as soon as I partially close it up, I feel it suddenly suck. So I'll show you. See, it's not really sucking air right now, but when you go to close it up, then it suddenly opens and sucks air. Let's increase the throttle which should cause the pressure here to drop and it should open all the time. I could probably do this better with a vacuum gauge or something, right? Well, you get the idea. All right, on to the catch can. If you recall in the last video, we scoped the intake manifold and there appeared to be a lot of oil pooling up in there, which would lead us to believe that oil was coming in through the PCV system since the PCV empties itself into the intake manifold just after the throttle body. So we want to eliminate the possibility that the oil loss or some of the oil loss is through the PCV valve. So we're going to install a catch can. And what a catch can does is it catches oil that comes out of the PCV valve before it can be deposited back in the intake manifold. Now we also saw a lot of oil on the valves, especially the intake valves, which can be from the PCV valve like we were just talking about since all that oil would be coming in basically through the intake valves, which if you've been following the series, you'll know we replaced already. So if we install this catch can and we still continue to see a lot of oil on the intake valves, that is really pointing to the valve stem oil seals. And I keep getting a lot of comments of people saying it's the valve stem oil seals, valve stem oil seals. So we'll install the catch can, we'll eliminate the PCV valve as a possibility, and we'll go on from there. Oil catch can. Obviously it's just a cheap one off Amazon. It's machined aluminum. Seems like it's pretty well made. It's a little baffle right there. It has an in and an out. The gases come in from the PCV valve, any oil condenses, and it goes into this can here. And I guess this, what I would call a Brillo pad, helps to keep it from, I guess, staying in vapor form and just being fed right back into the system. And this is a little dipstick, I guess, to check, see how high the oil is in the catch can. It has this little bracket you can take on and off with some hex screws and mount that somewhere in the engine compartment close to the PCV valve. Obviously you would want to mount it to a hard surface or a flat surface, but there's really no access in here. You got the brake reservoir right here. You've got all the brake lines on this firewall. You got the throttle cable, the fuel lines, vacuum lines, all these things just piled in right here where this catch can wants to go. It's almost like I would just have to balance it right here. It needs to be upright, obviously, because if it were on its side, it would just suck the stuff right back into the intake so it needs to be perfectly upright is there a way for me to just cut the line right here feed one right there and one right there and just let it sit in here what's it going to be sitting on it's going to be sitting on these electrical lines how could i suspend that so it doesn't damage anything i could just put some insulation on these electrical lines and keep an eye on it for now once i cut these lines there's no going back Do i have enough room to work with I think I need some adapters and a little more hose. Can I bring it back here to the firewall? There's nowhere to mount it. It would just have to hover here. Let's see if somehow I can just plumb it in right here and somehow support it. Let's pop this off. Is that the same size as that? No, that's bigger. Will that fit over that? 
Yes, it will just fit over that. So if that fits over that, and I can support that somehow in here, I just need some tube from there to there. This will fit on there. I could put some Teflon tape on that and tighten that down and then put it on there. I'll go ahead and put this on this side. This catch can came with this little bag of adapters and some Teflon tape. Might have to kind of wrap it like string. That's all of it. Put that on there. It's definitely loose. And there's definitely a kink in there. <laughs> if we put it over there. Oh, that'll wear through the fuel line. We don't want to do that. Well, it's okay if it leans backward, right? Some of this off. See if that will work without kinking. Yes, that's better. Let's put another pipe clamp on there. There we go. And I didn't have to damage any hoses. So I can undo all this. That looks like it's going to stay upright enough. It's also just up against this fuel filter, not the fuel line itself. Let's see, and it's leaning against this line right here, this brake booster line, vacuum line, which has, you know, a piece of protective covering on it. Now it is kind of sitting on that coolant line. I might be able to stuff some insulation under there. All right, let's check the mileage. So there's the mileage. Here's the oil trip, reset that. And we're actually gonna to top it off with the only oil I have, which is 5W30. Hopefully that was an overkill. All right, there we are at the full dot. Let's see if this catch can makes any difference. Toyota Corolla, Toyota, Toyota.